carbon-14 dating, for people who don't know, carbon-14 dating, what they like to do is that they would take a certain fossil, and then you got to realize this. Uh, all matter of life will have this kind of carbon within them. And then when the fossil dies, this is one of the elements that's retained within the fossils. So by measuring the amount of carbon-14 inside a fossil, we can guess how old the fossil is. And evolutionists would like to use this to prove the old age for evolution. Now, what we're going to prove is this, is that carbon-14 dating is not going to prove an older age for evolution. It's going to actually going to prove a younger age. Now, I know the arguments against certain fossils when they pull up older age. But what we're going to do is this. We're going to, in this particular video, we're not going to debunk this. We're actually going to do something else that's really interesting. We're going to use this to prove younger age. Now, you might say, no, carbon-14 dating proves older age. Well, actually, if they were really honest with carbon-14 dating, not picking and choosing like they've always done, then you can find an absolute younger age. OK, so the example is the Earth, you got to understand. So within our planet Earth, you got to realize this. The atmosphere on the Earth, so let's make this the atmosphere right here. It has carbon here. So within the atmosphere around the Earth, we have this carbon. Now here's the thing. If you measure the amount of, uh, if you go by carbon-14 dating, and measure, uh, measure the amount that's within the atmosphere around our Earth, it's actually going to prove not billions of years. It's going to probably even go as young as underneath 10,000 years, believe it or not. So the idea is this. The idea is that the, there's a founder of the carbon-14 dating method. His name is Dr. Willard Libby. He's the founder of carbon-14 dating, OK? Here's what he says. He says that if we were to go for somewhere between 20 to 30,000 years, we would reach equilibrium here in carbon. Now, what do I mean by that? There's carbon that's disintegrating, OK? Let's put D here for disintegrating. And then there's carbon within that's assimilating, OK? So with this example, let me use an example of a water fountain here, OK? So let's say that this is a water fountain right here. Now, let's, you start off from scratch, right? You start off from, from scratch, uh, this water fountain. It's going to be empty at the beginning, right? When you start off from scratch and then the water starts to pour, it's going to start filling up, right? But here's the thing. When it starts to uh, pour up, if you don't put holes in it, what's going to happen? Then the water's going to fill up and fall out, right? Now let's say that we put some holes right here, OK? A decent amount of holes where the water will not fill up all the way. So we put these holes, and then the water will come out of these holes. Now what happens to the water after that? Is it going to go higher, higher, and then spill over? No. Is it going to get smaller and smaller and become empty? No. It's going to reach somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. Wherever that middle line is, right? This is what we'll refer to as equilibrium, all right? It's balanced, see? It's building up. And it's coming out. That's the idea with carbon-14 dating. I'm giving a very dummy version. It's assimilating, see, building up. And it's also coming out, disintegrating. OK? That's how it works within our world, our atmosphere. Because of the, sun, the sun's rays that's hit toward the atmosphere of the Earth, uh, what happens is that carbon-14 assimil uh, carbon assimilates. And then there's carbon that, dis uh, that disintegrates as well. Equilibrium. Uh, let me put equilibrium. That way, you all don't get lost when I continue teaching here, all right? 
So it's going to hit a balance point equilibrium one day. Now, Willer Libby said within 20 to 30,000 years, it's going to hit that equilibrium point. Okay, that's what he said. Now, do you know what's amazing? We did not, when you start out from scratch, brand new water fountain, okay? Brand new water fountain, and then you put holes, the water's going to start filling up until you hit the point of equilibrium. Yes? Same thing with the Earth. Let's start out a brand new Earth, and we start to put in all this carbon. It's going to assimilate, build up, until we hit equilibrium, right? Okay, guess what? We did not reach, even reach that point yet. So while this, okay, so let me give a dummy version here. So while this carbon is building up right here, we did not even reach the point, this point of equilibrium yet with our planet Earth. That means it's what? Younger. It's shorter time. You see that? Shorter time. That's the point. Because if we did that with this water fountain, then we just started to pouring in water. And this water did not hit equilibrium yet. It's starting to build up, build up, but not equilibrium yet. Then we know that not a lot of time has passed, right? Probably maybe 10 minutes or something like that, OK? It's the same thing with the Earth. When the Earth was hitting with a lot of carbon, it's starting to come up, come up, build up, but we did not reach that equilibrium point yet, which shows the time span was really short. See that? Short. But Willard Libby said 20 to 30,000 years we hit equilibrium, but we didn't reach that point yet. Thus, it's what? Younger. It's shorter time. It's a much shorter time. Here's an even more surprising one. Didn't you know carbon is building up faster? It's, it's supposed to build up faster. It's supposed to build up faster. Uh, Willer Libby, he quotes concerning 20 to 30,000 years, if the cosmic radiation has remained at its present intensity for 20 or 30,000 years, and if the carbon reservoir has not changed appreciably in this time, then there exists at the present time a complete balance between the rate of disintegration of radiocarbon atoms and the rate of assimilation of new radiocarbon atoms for all material in the life cycle. He's saying we would have reached equilibrium, a balance point between assimilation and disintegration. But it becomes worse for evolution because the specific production rate, SPR, of C14 is known to be 18.8 .8 atoms per gram of total carbon per minute. The specific decay rate, SDR, is known to be only 16.1 disintegrations per gram per minute. Okay, he said right here, the assimilation production rate is 18.8, .8, whereas the decay is 16.1. So which one's bigger? This one, right? The building up? So the building up is far faster than the disintegrating one. See that? Which means then it should go even faster till we hit equilibrium. If it's supposed to go faster and we didn't even hit equilibrium yet, then what does that mean? Short or what? There must have been shorter time, even shorter. See that? This is the founder of carbon-14 dating. Yeah, I knew I had to draw this. People are going to get lost if I didn't do it that way. But it gets even worse for evolutionists, because this is a guy named Robert Whitelaw. When he realized this fact about carbon-14 dating with our Earth, he concluded that it was, this is amazing, quote, Robert Whitelaw, nuclear and engineering expert at Virginia Polytech Institute, found that the production rate is not equal to the disintegration rate. Remember, we're talking about assimilation, disintegration here, right? It's not equal. In fact, his calculations reveal a recent, a recent, recent turning on of the C14 clock. Uh oh, this shows that it's probably even younger then, see? Otherwise, the two factors would be balanced, equilibrium. So it must have been shorter time span. Whitelaw's research indicates that the clock was turned on approximately 8,000 years ago. Wow. This is a guy who's a nuclear and engineering expert at Virginia Polytech Institute, OK? Because of this equilibrium factor of assimilation and disintegration. So carbon-14, see, they're only focusing on these guys. But they didn't look at our Earth and measure, measured the amount of carbon-14. But hey, let's be fair with certain fossils, too. Didn't you know that even fossils have a problem with that? 
there's a person, uh, there's a team of scientists. It's called RATE. They were called the RATE. These team of scientists, and they're not amateur, okay? These are professional scientists here. RATE stands for radioisotopes and the age of the Earth, okay? These guys are professional. Larry Vardaman, PhD, atmospheric science. Russell Humphreys, PhD, physics. Eugene Chaffin, PhD, physics. John Baumgartner, PhD, geophysics. Donald DeYoung, PhD, physics. Steve, Stephen Austin, PhD, geology. Andrew Snelling. Is that the camera or is that the phone? I hope. Oh, okay. Is the camera still running? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. I, ju I just wanted to make sure the camera didn't go off. Okay. <laughs> Andrew Schnelling, PhD Geology. Stephen Boy, PhD Hebraic and Cognate Studies. Now this whole group team got together, okay? And when they got together, you know what they did, which is pretty surprising. Samples were then taken, quote, samples were then taken from 10 different coal layers that according to evolutionists represent different time periods in the geologic column. Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic. Okay, so basically I don't know if you know this. So within our Earth, okay, pretend this is the ground right here, okay? So here we are on top and this is the ground, okay? Underneath our ground, underneath our feet. Within these layers, they call these stratas or layers, okay? That's what they call it, layers or stratas. If you find a certain fossil in this kind of layer, then they'll measure it by, you know, something million years. If you find it, find it in this year, then it'll be something million years here, several thousand years, etc. That's how they find the date of the fossil, is depending on the strata, okay? So let's assume this fossil right here, it shouldn't be a human to them, obviously. It should be like an animal. <laughs> so let's just put an animal right here. If I can draw an animal, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a human, but anyway, okay. So here's, an, here's a certain fossil. Let's say this fossil is in this layer and strata which is millions of years old according to evolutionists, okay? Let's say that they say this particular strata is millions of years old. Now, if we prove through carbon-14 that this fossil, which is in a million-year-old strata, is actually young, then that would disprove the evolutionist dating method of strata, correct? Correct. Guess what? They did prove this fossil to be young not millions of years old in the strata because they went through different time periods Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic okay ancient stratas <coughs> excuse me the rate group obtained these 10 coal samples from the US Department of Energy Coal Sample Bank from samples collected from major coal fields across the United States. The chosen coal samples, which dated millions to hundreds of millions of years old based on evolution standard time estimates, all contained measurable amounts of 14C, carbon-14. Now that's significant. Now you might say, why is that? Okay, this proves it's young. Why is that? Okay, so let me explain. Carbon-14, how you date through carbon-14, so I'm gonna give a very dummy example. So then we have a fossil right here. Do I have a fossil? Oh, well, fossil's right there. Oh, I'll just write it again. Fossil. When you have a fossil, it has C14, right? Now obviously the C14, carbon-14, is not gonna be in that fossil forever, you gotta understand. Because remember, assimilation and what? Disintegration, right? So even though C14 is assimilating, it's going to disintegrate, it's gonna come out. So C14 is gonna come out. Now how it's measured is this, is that basically it's 100%, so let's say it's 100% carbon right here in the fossil. If you measure it by 5,730 years, I'm surprised I remember that, but anyway, if you go right here, five, every 5,730 years, I better double check. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, 5,730 years, okay. So, so if you go by every 5,730 years, half of it is chopped off. Okay, so then it'll be 50%. The next 5,730 years, then what? It's going to drop to what? 25. 
And then you go the next 5,000, then what? Smaller, 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 right? But here's the problem. These fossils in this particular strata, which should be millions of years old, they said right here that they found me all contained measurable amounts of 14C. That means it's what? Less than millions of years old, see? If they still found quite measurable amounts. Let's keep reading. In all cases, careful precautions were taken to eliminate any possibility of contamination from other sources. So this is genuine. Samples in all three time periods, these old time periods, millions, millions of years of these layers, displayed significant amounts of 14C, carbon-14. Significant amounts. See, not small, 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 small amounts. Significant. This is a significant discovery. Since the half-life of 14C is relatively short, 5,730 years, there should be no, there should be no detectable, detectable 14C left after about 100,000 years. Here's another one. Because the lifetime of C14 is so brief, these AMS, which is Accelerator Mass Spectrometer, measurements pose an obvious challenge to the standard geological time scale, this, this strata, geological time scale, that assigns millions to hundreds of millions of years in this part of the rock layer. They can dig up fossils proving millions of years or billions of years, whatever, but we can also, but they were biased. There are also other fossils that prove that they have to be just several thousands of years old. Because of C14's short half-life, uh, half such a finding would argue that carbon and probably the entire physical Earth as well must have a recent, recent origin. But let's make this the easiest. The easiest is actually this. What's older than fossils, older than humans and animals according to evolution? Probably like rocks, right? Like rocks, right? Like minerals. Diamonds should be how old then? Oh, yeah. Yet, how much C14 do they have? Mm, come on. Come on. Dog, we're done. We didn't even have to do all this. We're done. Take out a piece of diamond. That should be, what, billions probably, right, of years old? Yeah. Yet, how much C14 do they have? Diamonds. Oh, there goes evolution. We're done. All right. Heavenly Father, dismiss us now with your blessing. Thank you so much for the truth of thy word. Thank you so much that it's easy. It should be easy and folly, these wrong beliefs, evolution, and cults and false doctrine. And that your word is always 100,000 steps ahead of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you all. Have a great day.